So symptoms of the perimenopause and menopause can be frustrating at any time of the year. But during the warmer weather, some symptoms can become a lot more troublesome. So today I'm going to talk about three of the really common questions that I'm getting these days um, about things that are happening at this time of the year. So we're talking about hay fever, night sweats and hives. So number one, can the menopause and perimenopause cause hay fever? And the answer is yes. There's a lot of different reasons for this. We know that falling hormones can affect immune function, so it can make you that little bit more vulnerable to anything that's going around. If you're physically stressed, which we very often are with all the hormonal changes going on, if you've also got daily stress, a daily life added on top of that, all these emotional pressures can affect our immune function as well. So all that happens is you can just be that little bit more susceptible to all these um, allergy things that are going around. So what can help in this situation? Nettle is a fabulous natural antihistamine. So you can either go with things like a nettle tincture or even just a couple of cups of nettle tea a day can often make quite a difference. If you usually get hay fever, at, at this time of the year, but you're finding now you're in the perimenopause and menopause that symptoms are getting worse or you're getting it earlier, then start off with the nettle a couple of weeks before symptoms normally appear. And that way you're almost preparing the body um, just, just to help it. Vitamin C is really important as well. Vitamin C is a natural antihistamine too, but the secret of vitamin C helping in this situation is little and often. If you take one really high strength tablet a day, then by the end of the day, because remember vitamin C is water soluble, so what your body doesn't need, you just pass out through the urine. So in this situation, when you're using vitamin C as a natural antihistamine, you take little and often. So a really low dose several times a day can be more effective than one really heavy duty dose once a day. There are also quite a few hay fever remedies. We have several in our Polinisan range. We've got Polinisan tablets, which are for general hay fever symptoms. We've got Polinisan nasal spray for the, um, the, the nasal irritation. And we've also got Polinisan eye drops for the eye irritations too. And remember to drink plenty of water because if you're talking about histamine, higher levels of histamine, um, again, that are often produced by uh, allergic reactions, then keep everything nice and flushed. So number two is more night sweats during the warmer months. And this is it's quite logical, really. So the um, warmer the nights become, the more your general um, thermostat control can go wonky and it tends to go wonky anyway just due to all the hormonal changes and that's why you get hot flushes or night sweats but obviously during the summer months when it's a lot warmer at night then your um, temperature regulation will kick in a lot more often to, to keep you cool and that's why your night sweats either appear or if you already get them they tend to, to get worse. So the things here is definitely try and keep your bedroom as cool as you can. If your bedroom faces the sun during the day, then the, probably the best thing you can do is to keep your blinds or curtains shut so that the room is not heating up uh, to start with. If you've got little ventilation vents, and, and this is a difficult one because you want to open the window to get the air in, but if you live in a noisy environment, then that can affect your sleep. Um, but some windows now, they just have little vents. So even just opening those and obviously keep your um, bedroom door as wide open as possible to allow the, the cooler air to, uh, to circulate. You can get things like these cooling pillows now, which are great, especially if you get really sweaty um, sort of behind the hairline and, and behind your neck, neck and your shoulders and your face um, during the night. Go for natural... Um, bedding. It's really important because if you're using synthetic sheets and duvet covers, they can really keep the heat in. So things like cotton um, sheets and, and 
a very fine summer duvet can be uh, really helpful too. Some people find that these fleece um, under blankets can be really helpful. And I've been told um, from someone's experience that as long as it's the real sheep's wool, if you put that under your sheet or even lie on it, then the wool actually absorbs all the sweat from you and it keeps you cool. And if you have nice sort of thin ones, these sheets can be rinsed through basically every day. So if you have two just to alternate night after night. So someone told me they found that really, really helpful. You can have a, a, a quiet fan going on in the bedroom too if you find the air is, is very stifling. Um, and of course, we have our um, registered menophores tablets for the relief of flushes and night sweats. One in this situation can be taken with your evening meal for night sweats. Number three, are hives or prickly heat a common symptom in the perimenopause and menopause during the summer? Absolutely. Now, there can be two parts to this one. A lot of people find when they go on holiday abroad, they get the hives or the prickly heat anyway. And it's just due to a sudden jump in temperature, maybe uh, humidity as well. But it can also just be to the fact that, again, your temperature regulation is much more sensitive. And when the weather just goes up a few degrees, you end up getting uh, the, the prickly heat. It can also be due to stress. It can be due to your histamine and ad adrenaline um, too. So if life is very stressful, if you're finding that you're struggling a bit with perimenopause or menopause symptoms, then these are going to make you much more vulnerable to things like prickly heat um, as well. So definitely in this situation, because of the histamine aspect, loads of water, keep everything well flushed. Nettle again, absolutely fabulous. Your couple of cups of nettle tea a day, or if they're a little bit severe or stubborn, then go for something like a, a nettle tincture taken two to three times a day. Um, if there's a lot of stress going on, we've got our um, daytime um, stress relief or a vena calm, um, which can be used. The other really important thing to bear in mind here is that low vitamin D or vitamin D deficiency can also trigger hives. So we're in the situation here now where a lot of people, um, especially in the UK and Ireland, vitamin D deficiency is really, really common. And that's why I always recommend in the perimenopause or menopause at some point to get your vitamin D levels checked because vitamin D deficiency can cause a whole raft of simple symptoms that are identical to menopause ones. So that's one issue, just having a, a general deficiency will make you much more prone to things like hives. But what we tend to do now because of um, sun damage is that a lot of people will put suntan cream on before they go out into the sun. So you're not actually allowing your skin to manufacture the vitamin D that it needs. So unless you're really sensitive or have problems with the sun or have been told to avoid um, sunlight for any specific reason, then getting out into the sunlight, maybe just for about half an hour before you put your suntan cream on can help your body. I do that. I mean, luckily in Scotland, the, the sun never gets um, too damagingly hot. But I, if I'm out, I always have at least half an hour without the suntan cream on just to allow my body to manufacture some natural vitamin D before I make sure that I'm well protected. So I hope you found this one helpful. These are so um, common questions at this time of the year. If any of you have other any other questions about symptoms that have maybe got worse because of the hot weather, then just ask away. I'm always happy to help. And please share your stories. Again, if you experienced any of these, what did you do to help yourself? You know, I always love to hear your stories. So have an absolutely lovely week and I will see you soon.